This is Matt Graining. This is David Silverman. Jim Brooks. And this is the first show that aired. I want to hear the first joke. I haven't seen this in a long time. <laughs> has to be within the first minute, right? Yeah, it would be. And this is our first look at the uh, Springfield Ele Elementary. Sorry, excuse me. Pardon me. Hey, Norman. Sorry. How's it going? So you got dragged down here too, huh? Why are you doing fresh? Yeah. I love the star design on Maggie's snowsuit. <laughs> Of course, it was before we established real neighbors, so we just had random names called out to people. <laughs> Wasn't that wonderful? And now, Santas of many lands, as presented by the entire second grade class. Oh, Lisa's class. Felice Weihnachten. That's German for Merry Christmas. In Germany, this is actually uh, in part inspired by an experience I had growing up. When I was in the second grade, we studied uh, how Christmas was celebrated in many lands, and I had uh, grandparents from Russia, and uh, I was told, because uh, Russia is a communist country, there was no Christmas. Please sit down, Matt. <laughs> I have eyes in the back of my head, so children better behave when I'm nearby. <gasps> I think this is the first time uh, of many in which the entire audience at a Simpsons uh, episode uh, reacts in unison. Hey, yes, that was sort of the uh, that was a direct. Oh, so Scott, seen. how long since you've seen this, Matt? Ten years. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was some there was some question about whether or not we could get away with Lisa and that kind of. Ooh, so she, has, uh, she has a body stocking on. I oh, I got that's what yeah. it is. That was the explanation. That was that's later on. Yeah. With a melody. An original uh, idea behind the character of Principal Skinner was that he would uh, mispronounce words and. Oh my God! Look at those designs. Well, you know, it was early. Some, some actually <laughs> stick. There's Wendell. <laughs> and this is our first introduction of Bart in the series. Homer, he sings like an angel. You know, he's a little off model, but that's pretty close. <laughs> uh, Bart singing the uh, the alternate version of Jingle Bells, of course, is not something that we originated, but it's a classic uh, in children's playgrounds. And uh, it's amazing how many kids uh, have given uh, the Simpsons writers credits for, that's true, yeah. <laughs> for, for uh, ripping off other kids. This is extraordinary seeing this is after this long, man. I. Dear friends of the God. Simpson yeah. family, we had some sadness and some gladness this year. First, the sadness. It's interesting doing a montage on just a uh, on just a one narration. But we bought a new little cat. Try to come up with gags so with everything that's being life. said. Speaking of life, goals, so you can include Grandpa up with the photograph. Well, yeah, we had this idea that maybe characters who weren't present in the scene should always be seen in the background in portraits. And Bart. Well, Maggie we fell down a lot back then, the and I usually made her fall down as much as I could. Mark, haven't you finished that stupid? And we also yet? used to have Maggie Mark. suck on her pacifier Mark. over dialogue, Mark. and uh, we learned our lesson because it's very distracting. So Maggie stopped doing that after uh, a couple Sorry. episodes. I'm just a big kid, and I love Christmas so much. No! Yeah. Good example of showing people's expression without seeing their faces. I'll send them to Santa's workshop at the North Pole. Oh, please. There's only one fat guy that brings us presents, and his name ain't Santa. Mm, a, a pony? Oh, Lisa. You've asked for that for the last three years. And I one of the unusual things about The Simpsons was that the entire show is, is done completely in, in uh, cell paint. That, that is, the backgrounds are not done in watercolor. And so the cells are very thick with many, many layers. And that's why you see some uh, glitchy paint spots and shadows where the cells piled up. And called cell flares when you get the little halo around their heads. Homer! Yellow! <laughs> Who's this? May I speak to Marge? This is her sister, isn't it? <laughs> Once Shall again, Julie Kavner being brilliant. Remember when we were obsessed with keeping the actor's identity secret so they could experience this as real? Remember all that? It like, lasted like a year and a half at that. Yeah, really every time I have interviews that have like uh, hats on and glasses. Well, the direction that Julie Kavner was given from the very beginning with uh, Patty and Selma, the sisters, was just drain all joy out of every line of dialogue. you could have married. I don't know why you picked one who's always so rude. Wow. Good one, 
That was an easy fall for Homer. He got more painful later on. Bart, turn on the juice! What do you think, kids? Nice try, Dad. Ugh. holding forces, Hey, hey, Simpson! What is it, Flanders? And the first introduction of Flanders. <laughs> <laughs> so Flanders wasn't yet the uh, religious goody two shoes. Do you remember how we did when this was on, when it was first on, Matt? Do you, uh, you know, I, I think this was... Go Christmas shopping? I, I think, think right. it did pretty well from the very beginning. Get your money. Yeah, like Mark, where have you been One Mark? of the problems we had early on is look at pupil size. I, I'm an obsessed over little details, folks, because, you know, I'm... I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the kind of guy I am, but I, you know, we talked about pupil size, but we could never agree on what that pupil size should be until finally David Silverman made up the rules. <laughs> it was sort of like uh, one pupil is one seventh of the eye. Is that the rule? That was the rule. Yes, that's the rule. Yes. Bart, we had a tough time with this scene because we couldn't find a way out of it with the tattoo guy. Um, and uh, why why the tattoo guy would actually give Bart a tattoo. Wait a minute. What possible reasoning he could have. We came up with so many lines to justify. So we just gave up and said, get in the chair. <laughs> yeah, but that was the big deal. We were obsessed with making him real, with not taking any of the cartoon liberties. Attention all personnel, please keep working during the following announcement. And now, our boss and friend, Mr. Burns. Hello. I'm proud to announce that we've been able to increase safety here at the plant without increasing the cost to the consumer or affecting management. Ooh, burns sound different, huh? However, for you semi-skilled workers, there will be no well, over people. But that was oh, a yeah. stroke. I mean, Homer's job. That's a that was a and real stroke, man. Merry Christmas. Well, you know, my 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 feeling was uh, that if we made you know Homer working at a place that could actually destroy the Where's city, you know, and cause yeah. havoc, I think I thought. Uh, you know, and also I have environmental concerns. I thought if anything we could slip into the show, that would be really a great thing to do. <laughs> we used to cackle when we upset the industry at the beginning. <laughs> One of my favorite yes, jokes. Is a tattoo that says moth. Your son's tattoo. It's a simple routine involving lasers. Cool. <laughs> However, it is it's a great a gag that uh, Rich Moore did in the storyboard. You could mention that Rich Moore did the board for this uh, episode, and he uh, designed Flanders really because he had a great. Character, great drawing in the storyboard. We just use that when we can design the character. Squirm. You don't want to get this sucker near your eyes or groin. <laughs> Ow! Quit it. Ow! Quit it. Ow! Now, it's hard to imagine Ow. this now, but back in the old days, uh, uh, saying groin was that Fox uh, censors flagged that. But we ignored them. You didn't say groin so often in 1989. That Al quit it bit that was uh, very much inspired by uh, my relationship with my sisters, Lisa and Maggie. Oh my god, we're ruined. This is one of the first times I think Homer really, really was yelling and, and whining that signaled a change in the way Dan did Homer's voice. Less the Walter Matthau impression and more evolving to what it became. My now, those finger twiddling oh, things, that, uh, okay. that's strictly you. That oh, well, you, you pioneered that anyway, back in the Tracy Ullman show. I would say me and Wes. I think Wes really? Archer, you, you a great deal. And you got it from, uh, what, Oliver Hardy? Yes, I think we're going definitely Oliver Hardy on him. But having that time of anonymous work on, uh, you know, when, when nobody was quite paying attention, it wasn't center stage on the Ullman show, I think that helped so much. It was, it's nice to toil in obscurity every now and then, you know? Yeah. A great deal of freedom. Wes and I were just tickled to see the things we were animating were on a primetime show. Huh? Oh, I love you, Mark. Oh. See, I remember seeing you at the Christmas party, and you were the one who we talked passionately about a primetime series, I and I just, you collared me at a Christmas party, and I remember... <laughs> well, I always wanted to meet you. I figured I might as well foam at the mouth when I met you. Christmas bonus? I keep asking for it, but... Marge, uh, let me be honest with you. Yes? Well, I would... Do <laughs> I, I want to do the Christmas shopping this year? Yeah. Sure. Okay. No, Jim, this was a note that you had Mark, from the very beginning, Mark, which was to really Ooh, anchor the Simpsons economically 
Rack and, and keep and them alert. admired in their uh, money problems. Only and then make it real, because most sitcoms, Ooh. people have no money problems whatsoever, or, or the money problems aren't real. And uh, we actually kind of lost that idea uh, as the series went on. But at, at the beginning, they were really penny pinching. Yeah, it's sort of fun to get back to our roots, this man, even now, you know. It's, oh, yeah. oh, my, what a little mess we've got here. Well, which ones are yours and which ones are mine? Well, let's see. Go. Oh, this one's mine, and this one's mine. <laughs> this one's mine. one of my favorite jokes. Uh, they're all yours. Hey, Mr. Simpson, you dropped your pork chop. Yeah, this is one of my favorite jokes with this week. Well, toy. happy holidays, Simpson. Hey, Dad. I like about some of these early shows is, is what minor... Uh, occurrences in daily life we we uh, explored uh, as the show went on we got much bigger stories but this is just like What's shopping that? for uh, oh, christmas gifts when we don't have much money lump of coal in your stocking you've been sitting there sucking on a beer all day long so and we're just saying that the crazy. pace has picked up this is this is a slower pace than we're doing the show now oh much much slower but you know we're just getting rolling and so many things and, uh, i think we're all learning every step of the way well, what i remember about society is mutating into hysteria which is another what i was remembering about these early shows is that we really were experimenting and we're the, the, the question was could you make cartoon characters Even when they're that look this weird and grotesque actually make you feel some real emotion? I mean, combining it with jokes, but actually be on board with whatever the problem. That was a big deal to, to, to still do. I mean, it combined so many things. We were trying to do their characters. We talked about it endlessly. Well, Jim, one of the things you said was we want to make people forget they're watching a cartoon. From the top. And, you know, not always, but occasionally. And I think you really do get on board with this. And I, I think it was great that there had, what was it, 25 years since there had been a primetime, you know, animated series. So we so we, we had such full innocence, you know. There was our first Nixon joke. <laughs> one of many. He became a regular character. And what would you like, little boy? But that scene being done in one shot, that, that makes their humor really great. If such an emergency arises, you just very have odd uh, design in this guy. This is a character we would not have on anymore. <laughs> a nice bullet head. Homer, why are you seven hours? Another example of playing somebody's emotion on their back. Right for the top. Now, Homer, my sisters are here. <laughs> <laughs> and another. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying earlier, this is a my very nice layout done by Eric Stefani of the band No Doubt. When he first started working for us in 89, he and his sister Gwen were starting this little band, which is now pretty big band look well well so that's where the rumor started that Gwen Stefani is my sister <laughs> I read that on the internet why is that makes sense well I was just on my way out to get one can we go to death can we no that's a great shot I love this too this is a great scene hey, this is you this is you right this is all your yeah your, uh, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. We were the first of many of Homer driving down the street and seeing signs which make him angrier. <laughs> hey, you! What are it's you supposed to be a dark silhouette, a black silhouette, but you know. Hey, we don't take a retake of that. You know, this stuff seems so mild these days, but I remember back at the beginning it was... It was Something we really question: Do we dare have him steal a Christmas tree? Is that okay? Yeah. Does that make him too unlikable? Well, you know, I think a show like this sort of raises standard of some what's acceptable and what's not, and then people sort of move up to that standard. Junk. I'm sure you've already got something much more important: a decent home and a loving father who would do anything for you. It was sort of left from the Tracy Ullman show. We did these gags with uh, photographs where action starts and we do a flash. And quote Santa. I can't believe those kids are falling for it. Hey, Milhouse. Oh, hey, Milhouse. Is this the introduction on Milhouse? This will be the first the first time he showed uh, since the uh, Butterfinger commercial, yeah. feel better, Santa. Oh, Because that's his first appearance. Oh, well, there's another Nixon reference. Nix uh, Milhouse, of course, named after Richard Milhouse Nixon. There you go. Hey, Santa, what's shaking, man? Pay is a state of world. Bart, nerd. Uh, little partner? I'm Bart Simpson. Who the hell are you? <laughs> I'm Dolly Old Saint Nick. Oh, yeah? We'll just see about it. <laughs> we should do a commentary oh. where we just laugh at it. That's the material <laughs> we're all part of. Just sort of this self involved. <laughs> Cover for me, I'll be. Don't Is that sickening to laugh at your own stuff? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I think 10 years statute of limitations, you're okay. 
family from missing out on Christmas. That was, of course, Eddie the first time he said, I'm Bart Simpson, who the hell are you, in the series. And he said it once before, I guess, in the Tracy Ullman shorts. Well, let's not get mushy, son. I still have a job to You know, Bart had this Everyone reputation always for being this uh, uh, real hellion, and uh, he was actually pretty mild uh, at the beginning. Yeah. He expressed a lot of love for his dad, especially, in many episodes. Um, but I think there was also something that you had instilled in this, Jim, was that the family has to really love each other. We can do as many jokes and dark humor as you want to, but if the family doesn't love each other, you know, it's just not going to resonate with people. There's Nancy Cartwright doing, uh, doing that uh, clerk. Come on, Dad. Let's go. Thirty <laughs> bucks. You can't get anything. But There's a the style bucks. that we dropped, which is that right. sort of uh, airbrush uh, floor. Yes, we were using a. Uh, was an airbrush. It was actually different uh, texture paper. Oh, was that it? Yeah. And uh, yeah, it doesn't read as a uh, as a uh, any perspective. It just seems flat. Right. It tends to flatten the image out. It's kind of a. It's kind of a UPA like uh, approach. I got to talk to Steven Spielberg once, and he said he liked The Simpsons because it reminded him of the Sunday comics. And I didn't know what he was talking about, but looking at this, it does look like a Sunday yeah. comic strip. But this, having the painted backgrounds really uh, gets that across. What the painted backgrounds also did was we were able to do a lot of perspective. Of, you know, moving the camera tricks by animating the background, which is much easier. <laughs> I like cartoon characters refer referring to other cartoon characters. So I remember the third act being the, one of the more complicated ones because we had this uh, uh, dog race. And now it's like, compared to the shows today, it's very simple. But back then... The naming of the dog was so great. That was like that. Here's how you do anim limited animation on a somewhat limited animated show. No, this is an idea that I had that, that they were obsessed with this uh, long-running cartoon series, The Happy Little Elves, which we dropped pretty much after two or three episodes. So it was taken also, this was, my original idea was that the uh, the Simpsons would be the only ones that would have hair color the same as their heads, but the, uh, Barney uh, originally had the yellow right yellow hair. Then we dropped that in. Yeah, we, we separated it to be uh, brown. And the other thing, too, is that we had a couple of characters outside of Homer with the beard line, like Lenny at the very beginning, and we dropped that, too. Barney, of course, was inspired by Barney Rubble. We wanted to give Homer a sidekick uh, neighbor, uh, but we tried to make him truly pathetic. And <laughs> that was the idea behind Barney. The town drunk is his best friend. And I think one of the other things that I was inspired by was the whole idea of the sitcoms that I grew up watching in the 1950s and, and early 60s, the family sitcoms, Leave it to Beaver and Ozzie and Harriet. And I was always very aware of what boundaries were not being crossed. And I thought it'd be really neat to get a show that where we cross some of those boundaries. It's still, still maintain the sensibility of a, an old-fashioned sitcom. I mean, if you notice, the Simpsons have a lot of, like, look, there's a rabbit ear antenna on top of the TV. It's sort of a throwback to what I remember television like when I was a kid. And that was a big deal. You, always, you, you know, I remember when you came in that day and, um, you know, that they, they have to watch television. There has to be a television series where you watch television, which nobody did, live action or not. Well, one of the things that's great about animation is that we can actually show what they're watching, whereas in live action it would be too expensive. Right. My estimation of him will govern the prospects of my adult relationships. So I hope you bear in mind that any... Well, if you remember, back in the very early days, Fox was uh, very nervous about this show because they were unsure whether we could sustain an audience's attention for the length of a, of a half-hour uh, episode. And they, the one suggestion that was made very early on was that we should do three seven-minute shorts. Per episode, and, and then four specials until they got used to it, everything, and, and we had to have a conversation where we had to decide what we were going for, because they had the rights to The Simpsons, and for a while it was an absolute no. Remember, and I had to call you and say, do we gamble everything for 13, yep. or should we take, the, you know, we, remember? Yep. Yeah. Hey, look at this scene. This is great. Great animation here. Yeah, this was all the best animation of this episode. We, we actually animated the dog uh, cycle, we did a lot of elaborate pens. Don't worry, Dad. Maybe this is just for After this is a fun little camera move. Come on, you stupid dog! Come on, boy! A lot of great animation of Homer getting more and more upset. That was the most complicated shot. Wow. 
Yeah. You know, just doing a lot of fast cutting to get the... Okay. <laughs> I love that sound effect. It's a great sound effect. Well, one of the things we, uh, we decided very early We should do everything. Go ahead, Matt. I'm sorry. No. No, I'm saying we should do everything where we say everything's great. Great line, great straight line. We should just, that should be the extent of what we do. <laughs> well, no, we're talking about some of the rules. So we talk no, about when absolutely. We break the rules. No, I, I'm with you. <laughs> well, I mean, here's something. I wanted this show to be full of trash <laughs> and cracked walls and uh, imperfections in the pavement. And, and uh, we should really nail that in this one. <laughs> this is great, man. <laughs> See, I'm doing it. Yeah, I love it. I like pathetic uh, small figures in a wide shot. Look, Dad. Yes. So basically, the story so neat. Back. Oh no, you don't. Basically, no, no. Get away from uh, this uh, this ending with uh, the Greyhound leaping into Homer's arms oh, is uh, actually has some is some reality to it. We we didn't find out until after the episode aired. I mean, this was just us painting or, or writing ourselves out of the corner we had painted ourselves in. You know, a good ending for a Christmas show, and uh, it turns out that abandoned race racing dogs are a real problem. And we got lots of letters from people who are really glad that we highlighted this this social problem, this terrible, inhumane treatment of race dogs. I didn't get my Christmas bonus. Well, I remember this ending I being at the last minute Christmas when I had to everybody. get everything no ready was, and uh, hey, set to ship over to Korea. And uh, I basically shot coverage. I shot this entire scene in close-up and wide shot and had two people, one people. Ah, I forgot. That's exactly right, Jim. This is one of your notes that we were going to shoot coverage. You and Richard Sakai said, let's shoot coverage in animation so we can make decisions in editing. <laughs> wow. Well, that one we didn't have... gave up that idea. <laughs> well, that one we didn't have to have the choice because it was like, it was the 11th hour and uh, I was like, I don't know what's going to work, so we're going to just animate coverage here. Over here, so you can guide my sleigh today. Oh, oh my and all the reindeer loved you, and they shouted out with glee. You know, the red nosed reindeer, you'll go down in this story. Like a tail of the hook. Little. Ah. 